Phone Fort Smith that Custer and his command have arrived. I've already done it. New orders, Washington put their man Conant in complete command of Operational Plan 763. Serious consequences if you fail to comply. Acknowledge Terry. That sort of lays it on the line, don't it? Right on the line. Say, uh, ain't that long hair sort of a bother? I'm waiting for crazy horse to cut it. He promised to do it for nothing. Conan, have you been informed that I'm to be in command of this mission? I have. And then we'll have no problems. No, not unless we run into hostiles and you don't know what to do about it. Oh, I'll know what to do about it. Have these boxes transferred to your wagon immediately. You're in command, Mr. Conant. Sergeant, you take your orders from Mr. Conant. Well, I'll be doggone. Sergeant, bring those men over here. All right, you heard the man. Move. The way this must be cannonballs. Why aren't you helping? Mister, my contract with the government says I don't have to lift nothing heavier than this rifle. Send this to Washington. Yes, sir. It's urgent, so say so. Urgent she is. Here's a map. You'll follow the old Overland Trail to Medicine Creek. Do you mind if I make a suggestion? Not if it isn't unreasonable. Those boxes you value so highly stick out like sore thumbs. You might try covering them up. I ain't had so much business since the work train plowed into a herd of buffalo. Send this. Yes, sir. General Terry Fort Smith. Their man Conant may be an incompetent fool. Prepare for serious consequences. Signed, Custer. I wouldn't send this if I was you. You're lucky. You're not me. Send it.
before, he had been the youngest general in the Civil War. Within five years, he had been reduced in rank and sent west to be forgotten. But he was not the kind of man to let the world forget. His name, George Armstrong Custer. to this point. And that's our destination. How many miles you figure? Oh, from here to there's about 80 miles as the crow flies. Of course, we ain't crows, so you can tack on another 10 or 15. You ever been over this trail before? Yeah, on a mule. But never when I had any wagons to worry about. Sure ain't good going like this trail we just come over. After you get beyond that ridge why it really gets rough, and it's a doggone dry that the coyotes pack can needs. Roger, we'll take a four-hour rest here. Whoa. All right, this mob, make camp. Post sentry, when the stock's watered and fed, have the men break out cold rations, get what rest they can. See to it no one lights a fire. Yes, sir. Joe, let's take a look at that trail. Mr. Custer, what is the meaning of this? Any orders the Colonel has given you are countermanded. We're moving on. We've been traveling all night, Mr. Conant. Much of it on the double. Inform the sergeant and your men as to who's in command of this mission, Colonel. Sergeant, consider yourself informed. They'll obey without too much trouble, Mr. Conant. I can't vouch for the mounts of mules. It's a rare breed of man who can make a mule take an unreasonable order. However, if you're of that breed, up to it. Since you charted our route, I don't have to tell you there's little grass and no water from here on. Where are you going? First, to see if the trail's as bad as Joe says it is. And secondly, to see if Crazy Horse is preparing a little surprise party for us. This is Sioux-held territory. We'll, uh, we'll wait here for you. Report back by noon. Sergeant, take over. All right, cold rations and no fires. Get any worse than this? Shucks, you think that's bad? We got some trail ahead of us that'll make this look like the road home. That was my coffee you kicked over. I gave orders for cold rations. The men ate cold rations, sir. The fire was lit on my orders and over my protest. You have a gun, Sergeant. The next time Mr. Conan places my command in danger, use it. It is not your command. I thought that had been made plain to you. Not plain enough where the welfare of my men are concerned. You've already made two bad errors in judgment this morning. Out here, that's two more than you're allowed. We just scouted your trail ahead. I'm changing the route. You can't do that. Your orders are to take the Overland Trail. I'm doing it. We'll get back to the trail a mile to the north. Something's gone wrong. They changed their route. We've got to attack them now. And lose a dozen of my warriors? You talk like a fool, Gray Fox. What's in them wagons is worth any price we pay. You are a white man, not a Sioux, except by marriage. Why should I believe what you say? 
I've proved my right to be trusted a hundred times over the past ten years. There's nothing for me in the white man's world, except maybe the end of a rope. You are certain about what those wagons contain? Dead certain, like I told you. I have decided. We're going to attack. Yes, but not here. And not now. <laughs> that could get wagons through down yonder, it'd be a cinch bet to walk on water. Well, I had to be sure. It could have saved us 10 miles. Not unless them wagons could sprout wings. You know, General, you sure do take an awful lot of convincing. Well, this proves I can be convinced. We'll cut back to the Overland Trail. How did you get yourself into this mess, Morgan? I followed orders, sir. Can't you read a map, Mr. Conant? The crossing is two miles up. The road continues right through here. I saw no reason to go two miles out of the way. Now you see the reason. Get that wagon unloaded, Sergeant. I forbid it, Custer. Get those boxes out of there. Sergeant, don't touch those boxes. All right, untie the ropes. Now, what I have just told you is top secret information. I expect you to keep it that way, Colonel Custer. Well, it's all loaded. Do you want to count them? Six full boxes of rifle cartridges, Sergeant. <laughs> rifle cartridges? Yes, sir. Well, we'll trade you double our cartridges for the kind you got in those boxes. Mr. Conan, my men aren't blind or stupid. You might as well let them in on it. I'll do no such thing. And I forbid you to say one word. I'll grant no man the right to silence me. Men, there's something I want you all to hear. Now, I know you've been wondering what's in those ordnance boxes. Well, now you know. We're guarding a wagon load of gold. Custer, I want you to keep your mouth shut. Mr. Conan doesn't trust you. Now, but was whiskey in this wagon. I wouldn't trust you either. <laughs> it's part of the money our government is paying the Russians for the purchase of Alaska. We have been given the dubious honor of delivering it to the west terminal of the Transcontinental Railway. One thing, there will be no souvenir taking. <laughs> Any questions? Yep, just one, General. How long are we going to stand around here jawing about it? Sergeant, prepare to move them out. Custer. Do you know the penalty for insubordination? I should. Climb aboard that wagon. From now on, I'm giving the orders. You can't do that. But Mr. Conant, I'm doing it. You can address your complaints to General Terry after the mission is completed. Climb aboard.
hallelujah, brother. Either prayer works, or I was born under a lucky star. Now, if I could just find my pack mule. Let's not tax the power of prayer or your luck any further. As the good book says, count your blessings. Yeah, yeah. Were they Sue? Oh, brother, things were happening so fast. I wasn't worried about what breed I'd run into. By the way, Colonel, my name's Bledsoe. Custer. Oh, Custer, huh? Well, the only Custer I ever heard of was a, was a general. Well, I started at the top. I'm working my way down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, uh, I don't suppose it's too much to hope that you're working your way west. Fort Bridger's a long way away. But if you're not, maybe you could spare me a pack mule. It was a bad country to be traveling alone. We're heading west. Better come along with us. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you very much. Oh, Colonel. The, uh, the direction you're heading in, you wouldn't be following the old Overland Trail, would you? Because if you are, you got nothing but trouble ahead for you. Why? Well, I come that way. Last two days, ran headlong into Crazy Horse and a bunch of his braves. Could you estimate the size of the war party? Oh, must have been a hundred, I guess. But enough to take care of your troop, that's for sure. Do you have an alternate route, Joe? We can swing north through Lost Canyon. All right, that's the way we'll go. Thank you, sir. Sergeant, we'll make camp here tonight. You and California Joe have a look around. Any sign of hostiles? No, but that trail to Lost Canyons is about as hostile as you ever saw. We'd be better off if we as mountain goats. No way to get through. Oh, well, we can get through all right, but I sure don't like the looks of it. It's about the prettiest spot I ever seen for a bushwhacking. Here. I see a spot here on the trail. Well, that's where the trail runs into this big bluff here. So we have to swing north through Lost Canyon. Now down in through here is a dry creek. After we get across that, why it's a piece of cake alongside of what we've already been over. Handful of Indians with some guns could sure warm that canyon up for us so. Yeah, that saddle for a while. Got any water? I'm spitting cotton. Take it easy. That might have to last us for a while. I sure hope we got enough to get across this stretch. Thanks to the Colonel, we'll have plenty. Plenty of water? Plenty of ammunition, too, I suppose. This wagon full. Not counting the 40 rounds that the troopers carry. So. Do you mind if I sprawl out in the back? I got more aches and pains than you could possibly count. says that when the sun is right above, yellow hair will enter Lost Canyon. 
He will send a scout to look for us. But he will not find us. That old noble wolf is sure telling the world what he thinks about it, ain't he? He can count himself lucky. How you figure, General? Well, no orders to take. More or less master of his own destiny. And no responsibility to anyone but himself. You know, I never thought about it just like that. But you might have something there. Still, I never seen one that wasn't about half starved. There's a dead blame contrary that they just can't even tolerate one another. You remind me of something that Sergeant Bustard said about you. I'll bet it wasn't any good, whatever it was. General, you still dead set on riding through Lost Canyon? Not if you know a better way. I sure wish I did. Well, we better turn in. I'd like to get an early start tomorrow. seen with you. I know that, but I don't care. All right, talk. You changed the route we planned, but full Custer insisted on doing it. I couldn't force the issue for fear he'd be suspicious. Oh, you're afraid of shadows. I'm afraid of nothing, but there's two million dollars of gold at stake. And you'll be glad to know I figured out the trail Custer's taken. Crazy Horse knows? Yes. Where? Where will it happen? Delay. Well, we rid through it. Indians? Seen a lot of tracks down there, but didn't see hiding the hair of an Indian. Then let's get going. They're up yonder someplace. I can smell them. You gonna listen to that? Strikes me you're pushing mighty hard, Mr. Conant. And with due course, Custer. The responsibility of this gold is mine. All right, Sergeant, we're going through. Move them out. Yes, sir.
California, what do you think? Looks like we made it. Yeah, I think old crazy horse missed the boat. But we'll never in our whole life ride to a better place than that for an ambush. Sergeant, let's keep it moving. Keeping him. It's a crazy horse. It's a cinch. He's got something up his sleeve. We got enough water for men and horses for three days. What is your responsibility, Sergeant? Yes, sir. I think somebody ought to try to get through to General Terry. I'm sure it'll please him to know that the odds against us is only 10 to 1. I'll go. If your scout will go with me, two of us might get through. Do you know this area? I've been back and forth across this country at least a dozen times. Now, you saved my skin. Maybe it's my turn to help you save yours. That is, if your scout wants company. Well, I'd be happy to have you along. Man can sure get lonesome out yonder all by himself. Hey, Sue! It's a crazy horse. Yellow hair, I want to talk with you. The hills are filled with my warriors, Yellow hair. And I'm surprised to see the great chief Crazy Horse under the protection of the white flag. It is there so I could talk to your men. They can hear you. I want the gold to buy arms, ammunition, and supplies. If they put down their guns, I will allow them to return to Fort Smith. No other conditions? One. They must surrender you to me. You refuse my terms? Wouldn't you? you want me to tell General Perry? Only that we're pinned down by Crazy Horse. If he mounts a relief column, tell him to keep his eyes open. He won't have to, because I'll be leading that relief column myself. Good luck. Thanks a lot, General. Take care of yourself. Why don't you take the lead?
Hold your fire. What happened? Sue jumped us. California? He ain't hurt real bad, but they they took him. What'd you leave him for? Oh. Well, now, you ain't exactly the companionship I'd be a craving if I was left to my own choosing, crazy horse. You will not be thinking of amusing things to say for long, Scout. Oh, I don't know about that. Right now, I'm thinking about my chances of meeting up with you down in the hot place, and it amuses me quite a lot. Perhaps I will give you a taste of that hot place before you die. Yeah, and I'll bet you'll give her a try to, you red heathen, you. Go ahead. Shoot your best shot. There is time. First, I intend to see if I can make a trade. One small muskrat. Or the pelt of a broad-tailed beaver. Hey, you po. Yellow hair, surrender yourself and the wagons to me, and I will free your friend. You give me very little choice, crazy horse. How much time do I have to make this decision? This far I will go. The scout will not be harmed until the moon is gone. Then if you refuse my offer, he will die. You have heard my words. Attack at once. Crazy Horse would like nothing better. Cassidy, I'm going to ask you to risk your neck. You can say no and I'll understand. Well, I wouldn't understand if you refused to risk yours, Colonel. So shoot. It means trying to sneak out of here. You may end up where Joe is. Too much better in here. Little, mm -hmm. you'll come with me. You going after your scout? Got me in. Sergeant, you'll take over here. If anything happens to me, get these wagons through. Yes, sir. I wait for your decision. It has been made. Yellow Hair has been relieved of his command. We will surrender him to you, along with the arms and the wagons. But under one condition, that you prove to us that the man you have taken prisoner is alive and will be freed. As you see, he lives. Bring him here. Prove to me that yellow hair no longer leads you.
right, Conant. It's up to you. Up to me? Prove to that suspicious Indian that we mean what we say. Give me one reason why I should. Custis Scout means nothing to me. But he does to me. So move out. behind you. You think I betrayed my mission? Well, I know nothing about that, Mr. Conant. But this thing sticking you in the back is my pistol. So sing out. Crazy horse. My name is Benton Conant. I'm from the State Department. This mission is now under my command. Only if you meet me alone will I believe you. Turn to camp. The only thing I know about you is that you're a pain in the... begging your pardon. Anyways, Colonel Custer has his own ideas on a little chit-chat with that Indian. Tell him you think it'd be better if he talked to a soldier. Get ready to fight. Kill the scout. soldiers. Oh, you sure had me fooled, California, making out that you were so much smarter than those Indians. Well, I didn't plan on being jumped by no dead blame renegade. You mean Bledsoe? Yeah, that fella turned out to be more coyote than crazy horse himself. Leastways, Crazy Horse will meet a man head on. But what happened to Bledsoe, I mean? I killed him, Mr. Conant. I'm going to try to make that up to you, General, if I live long enough. If I lost you, Joe, who do I have to blame for getting us into a situation like this? Yellow hair has answered us. When the sun is full, we will attack. I want to talk to you, Custer. Go right ahead, Mr. Conant. What are you planning to do? Well, the next move belongs to Crazy Horse. If it'll ease your mind any. The Plains Indians usually won't make a stand-up fight. They prefer to hit and run. Behind these wagons, we can make every attack a costly one for Crazy Horse. We can hold this position for quite a while if necessary. But I don't think the Indians will fight that long, not even with Crazy Horse behind them. I see. Thanks. California is resting like a baby, sir. Never thought I'd see the day that he'd be shook up. It's the first time for everything, Sergeant. Including getting ourselves whipped by the Indians. <laughs> and this may be the time, seeing as how we're so badly outnumbered. We've been outnumbered before. <laughs> yes, sir. 
But we always had a trick up our sleeves. That sun will be popping up in a minute. And you know what that means. How much powder do we have? Five barrels. Fifty pounds each. Break them out. Now? Now. Yes, sir. Make sure you set these cakes far enough away from the wagons. It didn't look like an accident, Mr. Conant. It was deliberate. Now, let him go. These range. Oh. All right. Back to your post. Mr. Conan, I think it's time we had a little talk. You can't win, Custer. Your only chance is to surrender to me. Surrender? I don't know the meaning of that word. And if we die, you die with us. There's no need for any of us to die. Give us that gold. Crazy Horse City that all your men go. I know what Crazy Horse said. I want to know about you. Were you in on this with Bledsoe? Yes. I knew him before. And when I found out about the gold, I got in touch with him again. He arranged the details with Crazy Horse, the trap here. We were gonna split the gold. They were to get half to buy guns. I was to keep the rest. Looks like we got another little problem on our hands, Gerald. Sergeant, tie him up. Hold your fire. Steady. I suppose there's any chance he wants to talk some more. I doubt it, Joe. Well, now, would you look at that? And that. Now, what are they stopping for? Maybe they saw us with that powder. Nah, he's just trying to impress us with all the braves he's got on his side. Ready. Here they come. Will you fire? Now!
another day's yellow hair. Second Lieutenant Cooper. That is, Lieutenant. What's the next official train doing? Why, uh, day after next, I think. Never think, Lieutenant. One thing, before I start sleeping until that next train arrives. Yes, sir? I want a receipt for the contents of this wagon. Well, do you think that'll be necessary, sir? Since I want you to do my worrying for me, it is. And just what does this property consist of, Colonel? Two million dollars in gold, Lieutenant. Two million dollars in... And it's all yours till I wake up. About 30 hours from now. Finish shaving. <laughs> <laughs> 